Hi, today we are going to look into target orbit concept, which is somehow more advanced use of targeting pod than simple point and drop. It can be used as part of single pass attacks, but the full potential of that reveals itself when orbiting the target area. The advantages of this method over the straight line attack are you are not overflying the target area directly and you're not flying in a straight line, which enhances your survivability. The target area is visible from the cockpit, which allows you to look for smoke trails or incoming gunfire and react to them. There is more time to assess damage done to the target. There is more time and better view regarding the optics of the pod for acquisition of a follow-up target as well. There is extended time for body lasing or controlling the following attack aircraft. You can also fly top cover and warn them of incoming fire. Also in CAS situation, you can re-engage faster as long as you have altitude separation from other attackers to avoid middle collisions. Before we start, I have to mention three items. The first one is, autopilot is very uh, helpful here, as it allows you to focus on targeting and situational awareness rather than keeping correct flight parameters, but it limits the severity of maneuvers you can perform before autopilot disengages. For Hornet, engaging auto throttle is another way to offload workload from the pilot so don't forget to use it as well. If autopilot disconnects, you can still fly the orbit with the help of attitude indications present on targeting pod MFD page. Set your declutter level as required. The second item is turning the right direction. To maximize the use of available view cone from the targeting pod, first you want to turn away from the pod to create an offset to the target and later turn reversal into the pod creates the orbit itself. Since Hornet has the pod mounted on the left side of the plane, the initial turn is to the right. For the Viper, the turns are the other way around, as pod is mounted on the right side there. The same rule applies to all the other planes. The third is configuring the loadout, so that distorts don't obstruct the view. Examples for the Hornet are using center line and right external fuel tanks, rather than left and right symmetrical setup, or dropping bombs from under the left wing first. After the bomb drop, here is the initial turn away from the pod. Notice this little rectangular marker here. That is the indicator of where the targeting pod camera is pointing to. Middle of the screen is straight down, relative to the pod. Wait until the marker drops to the middle of the page, then reverse the turn to place it on the left, approximately on the 9 o'clock from the target. Keep it there and wait for the bomb impact. Take note that all the time you have a perfect view of the target and there is no danger of losing sight of it as it passes beneath you when attacking in a straight line. After the target is destroyed, you can perform BDA, you can take a peek at the target area if there are any incoming dangers and you still have plenty of time to scan the area for another target. Quite accidentally, we have another target here and this one will be attacked after a sharp turn to demonstrate how to fly the plane with attitude indicator on clear MFD page after autopilot disengages itself. But before that, we have to create a little more distance between us and the target. And these parameters, 6 miles should be enough. We do it by making the turn less steep. Take note as we do it, the camera position marker moves down from the 9 o'clock position as we increase the distance to where it's pointing to on the ground. You can use it as a help for creating a perfect orbit as well. For as long as the marker is stationary, so is your orbit around the target. Marker moving up, the turn is too steep. Marker moving down, the turn is too shallow. As I perform a steep turn towards the target, the diddle diddle sound announces autopilot disengaging itself. From that moment I'm flying the plane manually. 
6 miles distance turned out to be perfect, we are right at the bomb drop, which allows us for a faster engagement and here's the initial turn away from the pod. Now I'm flying by the horizon line on the MFD, it is way better here on Adflir than on Lightning. I'm waiting for the marker to drop to the middle of the MFD. As soon as that happens, I reverse the turn to position the marker on the 9 o'clock from the target. I'm keeping the bank angle and level flight until the bomb impacts. And that's another target down. Quick look if there are any unpleasant surprises waiting for us. Now we can perform battle damage assessment, continue guiding other aircraft to targets, or we can turn away and turn home. Thanks for watching.